Oh, hello there, you gorgeous lot. Welcome back to another fantastic show uh, here on Crafters TV. Uh, it is, of course, launch day, which means we are launching something brand new for you, something you haven't seen uh, before, and it is the Everyday Word Edibles. We did a festive collection of these a little while back, and you guys absolutely love them. So what we've done is brought back six sentiments that you're going to be able to use all the year through. Uh, you got a little bit of a sneak peek of them in the earlier wake-up call. They've been very busy uh, since then. Lots of you already got your order orders place. Now I am not here on my own. Oh no, uh, the head teacher, the head mistress of Crafters TV. She is back with me in the studio. Jan, how's it going? It's good, thank you very much. I, uh, we've all sort of had a little bit of a break and recharged the batteries. And I can't believe it's three o'clock already, Joe. I always say that every time I walk through the doors up here, the time just flies by. We were having a joke in the break saying, it never goes that fast when I'm stood ironing you know, or doing the, the chores <laughs> at home. But yeah, getting here, whoosh, it's just gone. All of a sudden it's, it's finished. So can't wait to get involved with this. Shall we have a look at some yeah, samples? Yeah, let's. Let's have a look at some samples. Samples. So if you were watching this morning, I showed a few of these, but I've popped some extras in as well for you, just to give you an idea of what these dice can do. So they are, you, a lot of you will be familiar with our edibles um, concept, and these are an edible, and you can see that it cuts away part of the design at the top, and then it cuts into the card with the bottom half. You'll be able to see that better when I show you the actual metalwork of the die. So they've all got an element that stands proud of the card, which means you can pop that on on any edge so in this instance and we're going to start with this kind of design when I start demoing just to keep it simple just cut into the front of the design there and again open it up and you've just got some extra design paper inside it may be that you want to take it on further and add it to the top of your design so this one's like a little um, stepper card here we've got the steps at the front and we've cut the design into the top so you can see here how that works in that the fact that this has been cut out of here and then popped up if you're not keen on this little bit here you can just pop a strip of card over it to cover it or you know sort of mat and layer it to make it part of the design but i just think they're a great idea and Mix and match them with whatever you've got in your stash, you know, whatever paper uh, collections, whatever embellishment collections you've got, whatever colour schemes you fancy. Again, what about that lovely Z fold? I love this. We're going to do one of these in the, uh, in the demos later on. But just cutting that design onto the element that makes the Z fold there. Little bit of a showstopper because not only have you got it once, it looks lovely as it is. Opening it up, we've got it that second time on the border there. So that's done with the uh, papers from the Caring Thoughts collection. With all my love, we've gone very sort of traditional there with the, uh, the red and white. You can see what we've got going on there. Just gives you, uh, I think it's actually meant to be down the side. Let me just say it that way, I think, isn't it? Yeah, that's better. Get it the right way up. Yeah, so just having them down the side of the cards. Again, we're going to go cover this concept. What I've tried to do is sort of show progress with how you can use them during the demos later. Again, just done in the pinks. It looks completely different there. We've gone back to that top design. And each one's got a different sort of... Um, embellishment sort of layer with it you can see that this has got sort of a floral theme some of them have got stars some of them have got flowers I just love this one congrats you did it what did you do what did you achieve today we were laughing and joking earlier about it might just be finishing your to-do list in my case <laughs> I normally end up adding more things on the bottom than what I've crossed off the top so yeah if you get to the bottom of it congrats you did it tell us what you achieved today what did you do so I love this but again look how different it looks doing it in different colorways so it's the same dye but bringing in the black there, it looks totally different. And again, just opening this one up, just, oh, there we go at the bottom there, just stuck together. And you can see, you know, we've actually repeated the, the letters that have come out of here. We've just used them individually to pop them on the top there. And then I've got special friend there, which I think is a lovely sentiment. So again, you know, you could, ha you could add your own if you wanted to combine this with something like happy birthday or, or whatever it is and have this as your main sentiment. But those little butterflies on there, and again, all the little, um, the little wings on these all pop out when you've got the die cut in there. So yeah, really, really nice. And a really good sort of focal point for your designs on there. So just a taster of what we've got coming up in the show. Uh, yeah, absolutely excellent. And the great thing is because they're edibles, it means you can do all of those different edible techniques with them as well, which is fantastic. Uh, lots of you saying hello. Uh, you, of course, if you want to get in touch with me, you can do so in all the normal ways. Crafters TV on Facebook, Crafters Companion, if you are across on YouTube. Let me take you through then those six brand new designs that you've got within here. So I 
love the size of these. They're a really nice big size. About six inches by roughly four inches is what you're looking at on each of these. And the great thing is that they are all really usable sentiments. So you've got happy birthday, just for you, with all my love. This one here is congrats, you did it. On your special day, and you'll also receive special friend as well. So you get all six of them there uh, for that price. Uh, 6144 or 7251. If you are a platinum member, uh, then you look at 4915 or 5801. You do get the Solar Gold Centura Pearl included as well. If you wanted to mix and match and get a couple of these, you're more than welcome. 23 pounds or $27 is what you're looking at uh, if you want to go for any two of these, uh, or of course individually 12.99, 14.95. But as I said, the best way to get the best value is to go for that whole collection with the cardstock, saving you over 20 pounds or 24 dollars, which is excellent. Uh, right, Jan. Without further ado, let's just. I we guess jump we're in gonna, there. I know you've got loads to share with us over the next <laughs> two hours, so I'm not going to get in your way. I always try and pack as much in as I can. You know me. So with what we do now, plus the demo that we did in Wake Up Call earlier, we will have been able to show you hopefully all of the six dies there. Yes. So uh, I'm going to jump back to happy birthday then to start with this one. I want to say we're going to keep it fairly simple. I want to show you different ways that you can use the edgeables. Um, we're going to use the different sentiments and sort of go, go along maybe sort of like from beginner and, and get a little bit more as we go through the demo. So I've just taken a piece of our stamping card again. I'm going to recall it all purpose card. And I've just literally created myself a card blank here. So we're looking at uh, eight and a quarter inches by just under six so it literally is a piece of a4 folded in half or right, out to create the card and then what i've done is i've measured up from the base of my card to a level where i want to pop my die so it's almost halfway along the height of the card and i've just popped a little tiny pencil mark in here to line up the die so let's have a look at these in a bit more detail then so each one like joe said they're roughly six inches across the design by around about four inches ish for the height of it and again it's up to you whether you want to have your die across on, on the card do you want it down the side do you want it at a diagonal do you want to make a stepper and easel there's so many different designs i think our joe's got a few concept uh, designs that we're going to look at later we thought we'd get into a demo so just to have a little look a closer look then we'll get our nicola to uh, to come in on the camera there and just look at what an edgeable is if you haven't come across this technology before the idea of this you can just see the die's got a little tiny notch here and then one that matches at this side. That's the key that that's where your cutting edge is going to start. So here, all the way around the outside of that design, until it reaches the other side where the notch is, you've got a cutting edge on your die. So it's going to cut that away from your cardstock. Everything below that notch is going to cut into. So there's no cutting edge here. It's going to cut into your design. So wherever you place this, for example, if I'm going to line mine up here, I'm going to get the top part cut away but this bit's going to stay in my card blank. So let me show you what I mean then. Where the little pencil lines are, I'm just going to line that up with my die and literally pop a bit of tape onto that top section. This is going to be cut away anyway. So I've got the little notches here and here, just against my pencil marks there. And then I'm going to tape this in place so that it doesn't move while it's going through the uh, the die cutting machine now they are just a thin metal die so they will fit through any of your machines the dies themselves are the correct size that they will go on your gemini plates they'll go on your midi plates but again it depends on the size of the project that you're working with so i've actually got my large gemini here and i'm going to open this in half because i don't want to cut through both layers and i just like to try and turn it at a little bit of an angle there you see how it's not quite so straight on my plates there just so that the rollers on the machine are hitting it at a corner rather than level and you don't get that sort of clunky noise with it so wherever you can just just tip it that little bit and then we're going to bring in our shims just as normal for a thin metal die there the plastic shim the magnetic and then you need a second cutting plate and then once all that's in place 
we're going to pass that through our Gemini then and that's going to do the hard work for us. Lots it's going to press all those cutting um, areas and cut out the pieces for us. Fabulous. Loads of people saying hello uh, and tuning in this afternoon. Georgie Ann's in Clearwater. Laura's in Virginia. Uh, Crafty Angie saying good morning. Joyce is in from Michigan as well. Arlene is all saying hi. A lot of people let me know that they've already gone for these, Jan. I can't wait to see what people start making. Yeah, them. it's nice to see what people do with them. I love it when people post and share their stuff on, uh, on the groups. And I've got one or two people that actually send me their photos as well. And I love it. I like to see, you know, people I know, particularly after the, uh, the craft along when I was here on Friday, there's one or two people have posted their projects and they look fab. They really do. So a couple of things I'm going to bring into play uh, before we I'm just just I'd put that that way up because I love to see this when you look at the back of it here it should look as if you've traced the outline with a pencil and you can see that it's caught all those cutting oh, yeah. points just in that one pass there so I'm quite happy with that but what I want to do is keep that die in place just for now so I'm going to pop these to one side I'm going to take the tape away but then I actually want to use the die as a stencil so I'm literally just going to pull those pieces of tape out of the equation and then I've chosen some of our, our uh, pigment inks here and I've gone for lemon tonic, ocean blue and crushed velvet. Now we have got some of these on the show for you and I'm actually going to use these through the die as a stencil. So again I'm just going to bring in my little um, box of finger daubers here. I like to use these, I just love this, I love the colour palette in it. Just makes me happy. The details are on the screen for those ink pads. Buy 10, get three free, uh, which is awesome. I'll take you through the colours included in a wee while. So I'm literally just going to get out my matching um, daubers. I have one for each of the inks in there. There's just, well, there's actually four spares. There's, there's 36 inks. You get 40 of these. So I've literally got one for every colour and a few spares in case I dip into a Midas ink or something like that. So what we're going to do, let's take the... Um, the lids off these so that we can work with them and then we're just going to push some of that colour through the die so just imagine that it's a stencil and we're literally just going to push a little bit of it through in places so wherever there's a gap on the die we can literally use this now and just push it through that stencil so you can see how it's actually highlighting the area now I've got one that I've done over here I'm just going to follow the same sort of pattern that we've got here so I'm just picking out little bits now I'm not too worried if I catch this piece of card because this bit's going to be cut away so I'm not too worried about that if it's if you if this was part of your design just pop a piece of scrap paper against the um the design so that the ink doesn't go on your your card there but again just where those little details are we're just going to pop those through and then I'm going to swap to my next color and again we're going to go for a little bit up here and again I'm not too worried about going over the edges sort of thing there we're going to go on the P in the middle so we've got the happy birthday one here and then I've got a little bit on the it's got a little party hat on the end which looks great a little bit of the bunting a bit of the bunting there and I think that's that one and then I've taken the purple and I chose these colours because I've actually got some paper from that beautiful masquerade um, paper oh, pad nice. and obviously I've sort of tried to match some of the colours that we've got in the ink pads with the paper that I'd picked out so again I'm just going to mix and match some of these it doesn't matter if it's not exactly the same as the one that I'd done earlier so we want some colour on the H okay and we want a little bit on that second so just mixing and matching those colors and then i'm going to go back and pop a bit of yellow down there so you can see how that looks so let's just pop the lids on those out of the way so that we don't get them all over we'll just give that a little bit of a a clean off there so that i don't get it on my card blank and then we can actually lift this off. So I'm going to bring in my die brush and then just over the die while it's still in place. I do find that when you've got really intricate ones like this, it helps to release the die from the actual paper there. All right? I'm not too worried about what's left in the die. I can always get rid of that later with either the brush or a, 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 a pokey tool. But again, you can see there, let's just get rid of some of the 
the bits from underneath and I think just looking at it there's a few little tiny pieces there that we've not got so just bring in the pokey tool get they those last little intricate, pieces they? they're beautiful you know I, I I'm no good with a craft knife at all but to try and actually you know cut something like this with a, a craft knife I think I think well I know I would be struggling I don't know about anyone else and then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring in my scissors and I can just see here where this part of the dice finished and it's just lined up with that little pencil mark that I have so I'm going to take my scissors and snip from the edge of the card to where the die finished just to release this piece and then on this side I've got to cut down the fold line so where I've scored it I'm actually going to cut to the right hand side of that score line and cut it away because I don't want to see that part on the card. I'm just going to take a nice straight line. So you want your big pair of scissors so that you can make nice long cuts just to the right hand side of that score line down to where I've got my little pencil mark. And it would help if you did it straight, Jan. There we go. And then once I've got to the pencil mark, because that's just a little tiny space, I'm going to come back in with my snips and snip to that day. And you can see now how that piece comes Excellent. away. All right, so that bit's actually scrap. And now we've got that. If I'd have cut it straight on the edge there, it would have been even better. But we've got this on the front of the design there, so you can see where we're heading with it. So all we need to do next then is decide on how we're going to basically trim it up. So what I'm going to do, because I've just nicked that one, I'm going to bring in the one that I did here which is very, very similar, but I've managed to keep it straight on the edge here on this one. And what I did do actually on this at home was add just a tiny bit of clear embossing powder. Can you see the letters have just oh, got nice. that little bit yeah. of a sheen to it there? But I forgot my embossing powder. But because these are opaque inks, they stay wet long enough for you to add the powder to them. So when we open this up now, you can see this beautiful, I just love this paper pad. I didn't think I'd like it, Jo, because you Why? know I'm more of a pastel person. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm not sort of into it's the very bright colours, but oh it? my goodness. I did the craft along with it on, uh, on Friday when I was here. And the minute I started using it, I was just like, oh absolutely fell in love with it and again it's it's double-sided so it's like which side do you use caroline says hang on a minute has jan got a new rag yes where's your rag oh, of course you weren't here friday where i've had to no. retire the other one. Oh, what? yeah i've had to, it was just getting really really it. yeah I've had i to hope you framed it and put it up in the well uh, i did craft, say to ben room. when we were having this conversation on friday says it may reappear in a craft project in future years you never know it might come in as a you know some kind of mixed media design but it was getting a little bit too scruffy for my liking so yeah i've got one of these nice microfiber ones but you Shouldn't can see you already not? look this was clean on friday and look it's, it's getting dirty already it's already nearly jan's dirty rag so yes it's, it'll live up to uh, its, its expectations i'm sure so yeah just a bit of kalal glue to actually get this one stuck because we're working with paper to cardstock and then I've got another piece that I'm going to pop in that section. So we've got that little bit of continuity going through there. So again, popping that collal on there, it gives you a little bit of time to wriggle it into place. And then once it's set, you get that really nice bond. If you prefer your um, tape, you can use double sided tape. You can use the, um, the tape runners if that's your thing. You know, whatever suits you, there's no right or wrong with the adhesives. Just go, you know, with what you find easiest to use. So that's literally on there. And then all I'm going to do to that, because we've got our sentiment there, I've just made a nice little bow that I'm going to put across the bottom here. And that is literally going to be it. I'm not going to do much more to it. Well, you than don't that. need to do you when you've got no, these really lovely big designs like just, this. I want that design to be the feature of the card. So with that paper with it as well, very, very simple, just cutting it into the front. And that could have been right at the top. You might want a really skinny bit at the bottom with this, you know, so many different ways. You could cut it on the bottom of the front then you could add a piece with it on the bottom of the top and duplicate it. You could go on forever with the fact that it works on the edges. Just think about how many edges you've got in a project. Yeah, so mm. that's 
number one. Excellent. Let me take you through some of the other ways you can use these then, because there's what we call the concept suite. Gives you lots of different ideas on how you're going to be able to do this. They can be an edge ball, but actually maybe cut them over the edge, but into an aperture, which is what's been done uh, with this happy birthday one just here. Another one with a happy birthday. Don't think about just using one die cut in each design. This one here has been cut into the top as an edge ball, and then again with a strap on the bottom there. So definitely lots of different ways to use this. Still the happy birthday one here, again, but done as an easel, which I think works so well, especially if you were looking to do a smaller card, then that's going to be great for that. We've then got this one, which is like a diorama style card. Again, cut into an aperture, which is fantastic. So lots of room there for you to create awesome things behind them. Moving into the uh, We Love one, you can see here, uh, we've got a stepper card done there. Again, works very well, cut into the edge of that. Fantastic also uh, on something like a fold back card. Again, using multiples of the one die there. This one here, sort of like a double, what are we going to call this, Jan? A double reverse fold, fold, Ooh, a double oh, reverse like fold a, Like a reverse gatefold almost, isn't it? Like, I like an, that. In, an inverted gatefold, That's isn't it? That's lovely, yeah. It? It's a really great way of using it. I've not it. seen that before. Me see? neither. Teaching old dog new tricks every day. <laughs> uh, here again, you can see another one uh, done as an easel card. I think about using all those different designs in there. Love this one, sort of like a illusion tent fold. I think that looks awesome. Again, keeping that very simple or putting some of your pattern papers behind there is gonna work really well. I love that you've got liftable elements as well in these. So uh, this one here, you can see special friend, uh, the wings on the dragonfly here, all of those uh, can be lifted up and inked individually should you want to do that with them. They're the six different uh, sentiments that you've got within there. 61, 44, 72, 51, already very busy on these as I knew they would be. Your first chance to get your hands on them uh, here today on Crafters TV. Almost a fifth of the stock has gone already, which is very, very busy. Uh, lots of you chatting away with me as well. Remember, if you want to get in touch, you can do so. Crafters TV on Facebook, Crafters Companion if you're across on YouTube. Um, Corbatel says, hello everyone, I do love these edgeable dies. So easy to use and so effective. Wendy's saying these are wonderful. Patty says, welcome back to our lovely festive jumper. Oh, thanks, it's new. Um, I, I went festive jumper shopping at the weekend, Jan. Got lots of nice new festive jumpers. Uh, it's a bit short <laughs> a though, so I can't I can't lift my arms up because my belly pops out. <laughs> Do you remember that like deodorant commercial? The woman she couldn't lift her arms up. That's what I feel a bit like today. Um, Monica loving the sweater as well. Thank you. Susan says I am liking the show already. It's Jan and Joe. What's not to like? Uh, and Corbatel also says I just never think of inking through the dye. That is absolutely genius. Talking of inking, uh, we do have some pigment ink pads available for you on the show. These are great, of course, for blending and inking. Also wonderful because they're the opaque ones. If you want to heat emboss, you've got the option to do that. So in here you've got parakeet, green topaz, misty morning. This one's a Chinese red. You've also got the orange, then fuchsia, a pale fig. This one here is a plum jam. You've got spring meadow, pink tulip, crushed velvet, the ocean blue, and you will also get the lemon tonic in there as well. 50 pounds or $70, that is essentially buy 10, get three free. If you are a platinum member, 40 pounds or $56 is what you're looking at today. We've also got some fantastic A3 card stock on the show. You guys love the A3 card. Got a few different colors here for you. So this one here is a pastel selection, which is brilliant. So it's that really gorgeous Centura Pearl. So it's got a real luster and shine to it there, as you can see in those gorgeous pastel shades. We then have as well, uh, the uh, this one is your ivory here. Uh, again, really beautiful. I think the ivory is very classy, especially things like uh, wedding stationery works so well uh, in this particular one. So you've got the ivory, and then you'll also get the hint of silver, I believe this is. It's a hint of gold, is it? It's a half, I had a half, it was a half. 50-50 shot, and I got it wrong, oh well. Uh, hint of gold, uh, there you are, Snow White Hint of Gold. So you get all three of those, which is awesome. 65 sheets in total there for you, which is brilliant. 27.72 or 41.22. Must go back to that main collection though. Very, very busy on that as we knew it would be. Six really usable, craftable sentiments. Uh, and remember they're edgeables as well. Go over to our website and have a look at the hours upon hours upon hours of edgeable masterclasses. The thing is with the edgeable dies, if it's an edgeable, you're gonna be able to do all those edgeable techniques that you're already used to 
working with under 50 pounds or 60 dollars today as a platinum member right jam what would you like to share with us next we're going to move on to um, on your special day this time and I'm going to go from doing the sentiment across the top to actually running it down the right hand side of our project so very similar to what we've just done but basically turning the card sideways almost so again I've got my piece of stamping card as a base I've put my little pencil marks on where I want to line the die up and then this time very similar measurements we've got that just under six inches so they fit on the uh, the card stock nicely and again I'm just going to line this up so that we've got um, let me just think I want to pop it there that's it yeah so again those notches that we talked about on the um, the die you can just see there's that little one at this side just there and then I've got one at the other side just here so those are the pieces that I'm going to line up with the pencil marks that I've made and what's going to happen is it's going to cut away that outside edge where I've got the wording and then the bit that's at the base of the die is going to stay in the card so again I'm just lining that up with my little pencil marks I'm going to do the same I'm going to tape it up at the top so that it doesn't damage my card itself and then we're going to bring those plates back in and get that through the Gemini again so again I'll turn my plate over and do a bit of housekeeping open the card up so that I've got it I don't want to cut through the back as well and again just turning it on that slight angle on the plate again just helps um, with the rollers on the the machine it's not a necessity don't worry if you forget to do it it's not going to cause any harm it's just something that I tend to do to stop the rollers having to go onto there and off the other end again so uh, in we go load that into the machine and that's going to do all the hard work for us and then we're going to repeat that same process so if you're just starting out in your crafting journey you know just keeping it nice and simple we're going to ink through that die again and use it as a stencil and then mix and match it with some of the papers that we've got on the show for you so to just start out quite basic and then I'm going to move on to some more um, not difficult designs but taking the cards you know to a, a different level so again, we're going to do the same as we did last time. We're going to take the tape away and just get rid of that off the, uh, the design there. And again, just roll it back out of the way. And then we're going to choose some inks. And again, this time I've gone for that beautiful uh, paisley paper pad. And I think we've got that on the show, if I remember rightly, Joe. Absolutely, so, uh, we do. I've got some paper pads, actually. I'll take yeah. you through them after this demo. Yeah, so again, I've actually gone for inks that match. Um, let me just grab a piece of it here. Look, you can see we've got that. But just taken a piece from one of those 12 by 12. And this is actually it's the first time I've seen this weight. It's more like a thin cardstock than it is paper. It's absolutely gorgeous. Double sided again. The 200 GSM. Yeah. So again, I've gone for a little bit of the yellow. I've picked out the orange there. And I've also gone for some of the turquoise. I've gone with parakeet just to keep it in line with the paper again. So that when we come to actually dress it, we've got that sort of correlation with the colours. So again, take those out. I'm going to go back to the finger daubers again. So we need the yellow one back. We need the orange one back and we need parakeet. OK, just to get those ready. So again, I'm just going to follow the one that I've got ready just to give you an idea of the uh, the designs there. So we're going to go yellow. So pretty much, as I say, like we've just done, we've just turned it on its side, basically, just to show you that it looks just as nice when those edibles run down that um, that right hand side of the card as well so wherever there's no hard and fast rule about where to put your colors Not stop, nothing stopping you putting this all one color if you want you to could do it all here. one color you could do it sort of in in completely you know black and white would look terrific you and know well, if you wanted to our... use white card with the black yeah. ink would look stunning nice. absolutely Will all of our ink pads work through these in they this way? They will, they will, yeah. The only reason I, put, I must admit, I do tend to favour the pigment inks. I do like them a lot because they do several things. But you could be doing this with your, I mean, this one's actually a quick dry that I've got here. The, uh, the turquoise right. one, I just happen to have the quick dry one with me. Uh, it could be the water reactive. They will all do the same job for you here. So again, just going to bring some of that orange through just to sort of keep it, as I say, just linking it to that paper wherever you want to have a little bit of color just pop in 
you know, and it doesn't matter if it's not identical to the other one that I've already done. I'll leave that one there. And then again, just that turquoise, just to finish it off there. And it's just great. I mean, just the dyes on their own, fantastic. But the fact that you've got this added concept in them, yeah. I mean, obviously you don't need to ink them at all. You're still going to get something absolutely fabulous if you saw from the concept cards. But yeah. I think it's all about having the options, isn't it? Sam? It is. And I mean, all dyes have got this facility, Joe. You know, all the dyes you should be able to cut, emboss and stencil with. And I think sometimes we forget that. I know I do. I get so carried away with, oh, I need it to cut and I want to see what it looks like. And you take the dye off and you forget that you can do all these different things with them but I just think with this being lettering it lends itself to just having that highlight with the colour uh, it just sort of it takes it to another level and as I say they'd look terrific if you'd got um, just if you're working on the white stamping card literally just to do black ink through it if that's all you did it would look terrific so again just like we did before we're going to take that dye brush and I'm going over the top of the dye itself and you can see how it helps to dislodge the dye there. Okay. Fabulous. Now, just what I didn't show you last time, and I will show you because it's very, very simple. I tend to forget this. I've just got some water in my spray bottle. And literally, because the, the inks are all water-based, see where the cloth comes in. And they all clean up beautifully. So the ink doesn't damage the dye in any way. You can see how it just comes up ready for doing next time so that's how i've cleaned them up before i put them back Brilliant. in the packet there just in case anybody was uh, was wondering so when we take this away again you've got that beautiful sort of detail on there and exactly like we did before i'm just going to take the scissors and i'm going to go from my pencil line up to where that die finishes here to release the top and then flip it round and we're going to do exactly the same from the little pencil line that we've drawn to where the die goes and you can see that we've got that waste piece now comes away so just be gentle with where the little curly cue bits are and then again any bits to the left you can either take your die brush back and it will dislodge some of them for you or if you prefer to use your pokey tool you've got a little bit more precision with where you go in so again whatever your preferred method is again this is what i love about crafting there's no right or wrong you know i always say to people if you're just starting out try the different ways that we show you when we're demoing and you choose what works for you you know you don't have to do this because so and so says you've got to do this you use what works for you so you can see there we've got all those pieces out now and it looks beautiful so again we'll just move all those out of the way I'll get those in the bin in a second and again i'm just going to because it's been through the gemini i'm just going to reinforce that line where we folded it because we want to make sure that's a natural fold there so literally i've got this now on the opening side the right hand side of my card so i'm going to build it up now we're actually going to pop a blue layer inside oh so, so that we, that shows up so much that's better really when it's onto the blue color. doesn't it really makes it pop and it? then inside the blue we're going to pop that lovely piece of uh, pattern oh, wow. paisley paper there so again i'm just going to go um Shall we do tape pen or shall we do? We'll go with the Kalal again, I think. All right. And just pop that again. You know, the other side is just equally nice, isn't it? I, I do get a bit, uh, I always have to have two pads when they're double sided so that I can use one for one side and the second pad for the, uh, the reverse side. Or one to stroke and one to use. Oh, so. definitely. That's when three come into play. If it's a really nice pad, we end up with three of them. Yeah, I've got one or two of those as well. I just looked in the other day and I thought, I don't add up how many paper pads I've got. I just love paper and I think that's what got me addicted to the paper crafting in the first place. It was the paper itself? Yeah. Are you a self-confessed paper stroker? Oh, on a sniffer, stroker, you Sniffing name it, Sniffing it, Joe. stroking it yeah. a lot. Paper wow. stroker, paper double sniffer. Fret. And then what I'm going to do with this one to make it more like an insert is just run a line of tape down that edge and I'm just going to run one down this edge here so that we're literally going tape to tape and rather than sticking it all it'll make it a bit more sort of loose leaf as if it's like an insert then and then just pop it in up to the score line there on the fold and bring that round so that it's just literally got that adhesion here on the back all right 
and you can see we've got like one layer two layer and then you could actually if you wanted to pop like a little hidden message in the oh, back yeah. if you want and then i've made a smaller panel using the same blue and a scrap of that paisley to put on the front there so you can oh, see where we're heading with that this is turning into and again you know i'm not going to do much more than that because i want that sentiment to be the focal point now you know if i was sort of taking it a step further you could add ribbon like we did on the first one you might want to sort of get the gems out and i know if any of you were watching on friday when we did the craft house or oh, joe we had a laugh they bought so many of the products that we'd hardly got anything left when oh, we went no. live but there were some beautiful sets of pearls on that show so again you know things like that you can add to the centers of your little flowers if you just wanted to enhance it the other thing that looks nice as well which i often do with them being water-based inks again if you get the um the old clear overlay this comes in handy i have, I have tons of these and again, you know, you can just add little time, not too much because it will actually dislodge the ink if you do it too heavy, but just a little bit here and there, just to add that bit of sparkle, you know, like where the bits where we haven't got any ink here, you might want to just add that little bit of extra sparkle to it just Fabulous. to jazz it up. You can also use your sparkle pens on the paper as well. So it may be that you actually wanted to just highlight areas of the paper. So what was a flat matte paper then actually takes it to another level with a little, you know, those of you that like a little bit of sparkle. Who doesn't like a little bit of sparkle? Oh, like you, life's not complete without some sparkle. Honestly, what is, is life without a bit of sparkle? Yeah. So again, just those two little bits there, adding them a bit of clear sparkle so that when you tilt it in the light, and then it's like, step away, Jan, stop. You've done enough, you know. No, no, we're not going to click over the whole bit. But yeah, just top pop you that one round. And again, you can see, keeping it nice and simple and letting that dye do all the work. So we've got that on your special day. And then we've just backed it with the blue. And then you've got a lovely piece of that uh, paisley inside there. So we've done the one across the top. We've done the one across down the side. And then we're going to take it a step further with the next demo then. Fabulous. Getting very, very busy on this. Let me take you back through the six sentiments that you've got in here. Love the fact you've got the sentiments in there. And then obviously all the design uh, correlates to that sentiment. So of course, on the happy birthday, we've got the streamers, the party hats, uh, the cake in there as well. Think about also, you know, using it as in cutting it into uh, your concept, as you can see here with this left fold card. Let me get my nails under there. There we are using it onto the concept, but also cut it out as a topper is definitely something you can do as well. So you're going to get happy birthday. Then you've got just for you with a gorgeous schmetterling on there next up you've got with all my love you can see all the lovely rose detail that is around that this one here is the congrats you did it which has that floral theme running around the design then you've got the uh, on your special day which again has that lovely floral element and special friend as well there with the dragonflies as you can see they are the six sentiments that you are going to receive i'm sure you'll agree very very usable sentiments 61 44 72 51 make sure you're using your club inspired discount i want to just take you through some of the amazing uh, paper pads that we have for you on the show all of these i think would work beautifully with this collection first one we're going to take a look at is the Enchanted Dreams from Sarah Signature. Really beautiful, this one. Some panels in the back that you're going to be able to cut down with your guillotine and use instantly as toppers. Some that lend themselves really well to things like your scrapbook pages. Really nice, big designs. Equally, you could cut elements of those down. Then into some really nice, some abstract. Uh, you've got unicorns in here. I mean, it really is a sort of mixed bag, uh, but really lovely, vibrant colours. Some rainbows in there. Love that hydrangea element that you've got running through this as well. A really beautiful pad. I'm truly really agree. 14.99 or 19.95 if you want to go for that one this one here is the next one i want to share with you is the summer sunset which is this one just here 30 sheets here and it is pearlescent this it was one of the first pearlescent pads that we did you can see it's got a real sort of vintage 70s vibe to it which i absolutely like on the back of each page you've got sort of a faux inky background which is going to match perfectly so if you want to matte layer with this it's going to be excellent for allowing you could to do that that one there, I love. It's got a sort of Moroccan tile feel to it, which is gorgeous. So that one there is $19.99, $24.95. You want to go for that one. We also have uh, the Masquerade available for you as well. 24 sheets coming in this one. Again, very 
rich and opulent this one you've got foiling uh, running through here as well um, just a beautiful pad lots of feathers if you love to fussy cut definitely elements of this you're going to be able to cut down uh, to I think it's gorgeous and the colorway is amazing someone won't have cut into yours don't worry you will get a whole one uh, so you've got that one just there and then I also have this one here which is your decadent decor which is fantastic again it's another one of the pearlescent ones uh, that we did a very grown-up colour tone, uh, this one as well. There's lots of beautiful floral paisleys in here. Shine on it is absolutely incredible. Uh, and again, you can see all of those beautiful designs that you will get included in there. 200 GSM, this one. So more of a card weight than a paper weight. 19.99, 24.95. Question come in for you, Jan, from Diane. How does Jan get her bow tails in line with the bow and not below? There's a tongue twister. Oh, ooh, now then. Yeah, it's all about how you tie it. I've not actually got any spare ribbon with me, but it's about, depending on how you tie your bows, first of all, it's like I, at home I often use the little bow uh, tool, you know, the little, um, what's it called? There's one in the uh, Ultimate. Oh, and the bow I've maker. Got, uh, the bow maker, that's the word I was looking for, Joe. So simple. And yet I missed the obvious, didn't I? Uh, but I use one of those. I've got a little separate one and I do that. Now, if I pull the tails to the middle when I tie it and stretch them out sideways you're going to get that nice flat bow if I want a bow that have got the tails hanging below it then I'll actually bring them to the bottom and before right. I pull it tight I pull them out towards the bottom so it's all about how you manipulate the ribbon and thinking about where you want it to go before you finish that last sort of securing that tie at the end so that's the way I've done it in the past there may be other ways out there I'm not sure Okie doke, I hope that helps. A lot of love. Sarah's creation says, heavens, I love this paper. No, I do not need it. I don't know if it's a need or a want, but it is gorgeous. Uh, right, I'm going to give you an opportunity to check out. Lots of you have very full baskets over on the website. So whilst you do that, let us share with you all the details of Club Inspire. Welcome to Club Inspire the crafters companion community where you can feed your crafty obsession. Join our fantastic loyalty club today and receive 20% of your first order. We'll also give you 250 points to help get you started. Other benefits of joining Club Inspire include exclusive special offers and discounts for Club Inspire members only, exclusive sneak peek previews of brand new product launches, and of course, the Club Inspire community group on Facebook, where you can access exclusive content such as downloads, offers and inspiration. And of course, you can chat and share your makes with other members. You'll receive one point for every pound, dollar or euro you spend. And the more points you receive, the more benefits you'll unlock. So what are you waiting for? Sign up, join the club and start rewarding yourself today. Achieve crisp, precise, and perfect die cutting results every time with the Gemini Accessories Plastic Shim. The idea behind the plastic shim is that it creates a thicker plate combination, offering an even more precise die cutting result with each pass. Simply pop a plastic shim between your cutting plates and then roll through your Gemini die cutting machine and voila, an amazing precise cut every time. Plastic shims work really well with detailed or thin metal dies. So if intricate cutting is your thing, then the Gemini Accessories Plastic Shim is your best friend. Their plastic shims size to work with a whole range of Gemini machines. We have some awesome deals going, so visit Crafters Companion website and find out more. We've had to make some changes to our shipping charges and we want to keep you informed. With continued pressure on domestic shipments around mainland US, we've had to temporarily increase the cost of our regular 6 to 10 working day standard shipping service from $9.99 to $12.95 and our free shipping threshold from $100 to $125. We also have some really great news to tell you. We've introduced a brand new shipping service called Express Delivery. 
This is a fully tracked door-to-door -door service which takes three to seven working days and costs $19.95. This option means you'll get your crafty goodies in your hands sooner, meaning less waiting and more crafting. We're also upgrading delivery services for our Gold and Platinum Club Inspire members who will now receive priority delivery on all of their orders. And if that wasn't enough, we've upgraded these orders to our new Express three to seven day service. Your patience and understanding throughout this very busy time has been amazing. So we'd just like to say a huge thank you and we look forward to chatting to you again very soon. Wow, a very, very busy launch as we knew it would be. Uh, any questions or comments you've got? Or do you know what? Any salacious gossip? Do let me know, Crafts <laughs> TV on Facebook, Crafts Companion, uh, if you are across on YouTube. You'll notice as well, the Christmas decorations have gone up today in the studio. Christmas f officially starts, Jan, uh, today, the 8th of November. Yes, it's, it's we're on counter. Is it, it How many sleeps, Johnny, is it till Christmas? Can you find out for us? Less than 50, apparently, is it less but than I don't 50? know what the less was. They Who's just said on the radio this morning it was less than 50 days until Christmas and I thought... 47, 47 days oh. until Christmas. Not long it's not, now. It's not, is it, really? oh, I can smell those Brussels sprouts already, Jan. <laughs> I uh, think right. it's pies. So it means pies. Oh. I just love this. I love mm. this set. Let me get right in the place again. Where are we? Where are you? Yeah, there you are. Where are my hat? You got your hat there on. There we are, look. And the, I mean, it's, I don't know if you've seen over there, but it's warm in the studio today. Can I mean, we have I don't a know if we can see, there? but there's a, I mean, the, uh, the, 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 we've installed a genuine log fire it's beautiful, in the studio isn't it? for, Do feel uh, very for Christmas. Yeah, really yeah. I mean, it's warm in here. In fact, I might bring some uh, marshmallows Toast in up, yeah, and some later, chestnuts yeah. and we'll pop them on the fire <laughs> uh, tomorrow. Uh, we are, <laughs> we'll show it to you in a, in a minute. Uh, right, Jan. Right. Oh, here it is. I'm going to run over there. I just so I warm up on it a bit. Wait a Oof. minute. He's going to warm his hands on the fire. Look. <laughs> oh, it's so look nice and warm, that. isn't it? It's yeah, beautiful. it does. Oof. Yeah, we'll bring some chestnuts in, Jan, and pop those on there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute. We've got, oh, we've got a new presenter in. Look. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, Jan, back to you. Right, let's get cracking then. So we're going to go with the special friend this time, OK? And I'm going to sort of go to an easel card this time. So we're going to make a front. And this is actually going to be the bit that stands, you know, at the front on the slant of the easel card. So we've got some uh, different Centura pearls on the, the, um, the show. This is the baby pink. But again, you can do this with any of the colours. And again, all the dies have got that same format. So you've got the element that's going to cut out and then you've got the element underneath that's actually going to be the bit that cuts into the die so all around the edge here is the cutting edge all the piece at the bottom is going to stay in the card so what I want to do this time is just pop it up right to the top I've not even bothered with any pencil lines this time because I want it to cut right into the uh, the top edge of the card so literally taking the die as far as up, up as it'll go to that edge and then again just taping it in place onto that top piece that's going to be the cutaway part there and again we're going to pass that through our gemini so flip the plates over again jan now wherever you can if your project is small enough flip it round so that your die is vertical okay so if you've got your rollers here at this angle and your die goes through vertically you will get I don't want to say a better cut because that's not the right word, but it will handle the cutting better, if that makes sense. If you think about how many cutting points are on the die, if you pop it through this way, then the, die, the rollers have got to consider all the cutting points across the width of the die, which we said was six inches. If I pop it through this way, the rollers are contending with the cutting points across the four inch bit. So the pressure spread, it's just it's all to do with the science and the mechanics of it. But wherever your project will allow, flick this this way so that it's going through, whether it's your um, junior or whether it's your, your big Gemini, if you've got the chance, Pop it on that vertical rather than the uh, the horizontal. Same plates in there again, and then we're going to pass that through the machine. And then this time, instead of doing the inks, I was like, right, well, what we've done inks a couple of times on the stamping card. On the pearlescent card, the alcohol markers work beautifully oh, really? with it. So I've just cut, chosen a couple of my tri blends this time. 
All right, I've just popped those in my bag and picked a couple out that are going to match with the colour scheme that I'm doing. And this time we're actually going to use those instead of the inks. So you can see again, if we flip it over, it's got that beautiful design on the back. I know it's cut, it's got all that detail there on the back of it. All right, so again, I'm going to keep this in place and take the tape away because that is actually covering some of the, um, the design. So just to pull that tape off and dispose of that. And then I'm just going to turn, I'm just going to do a little bit of this because I've got one that I've already done. I think we'll go with the mid-tone. So again, it's not going to damage your dye. You might get a little bit, in fact, I can probably get away with taking the dye off actually because I can see where these elements are. So let's just, rather than risk, because the alcohol markers will, uh, they are permanent. So if you don't mind it getting on your dye, absolutely fine. But I just think for the point of demoing purposes, my dye should really stay nice and clean. So again, you can see. And don't forget that you get the freebie bit because you're getting the lettering here that's cut into the card. But if you wanted to save these pieces, you've actually got those beautiful script letters that you could use maybe inside the card or in another project. So let's just pop that to one side. Just make sure we've got those bits out and then again just with those little snips each time because my piece of card's slightly wider I just need to do that little snip into there there we go to take away that edge part so I think looking at that oh one little pesky but there's always one look hiding thinks that you've uh, you've forgotten it so again let's get all those pieces to the side and then I'm just going to take that pen and literally highlight some of those areas instead of using the um, inks. So as I say, it works beautifully on the Centura Pearl. It will work on your stamping card just the same. So again, wherever you want to add a little bit of detail, you can go in with the pens instead. Now this wouldn't work with a water-based marker. So for example, our aqua markers would just sit on top of the card. Uh, it wants to be an alcohol marker to do this particular technique. Uh, so it's again, funny because we'll I don't look. think you really, we don't think we really think about using alcohol markers on coated cardstocks, do we? But they Not at all. But yeah, it will work absolutely brilliantly on the uh, the Centura Pearl. I mean, the inks work on it nicely as well. Uh, opaque ink, you, uh, you would need to wait for it to dry because it does stay wet that little bit longer with it being a coated cardstock. But yeah, the alcohol markers work. As I say, it wouldn't work with your watercolour. The water would just sit on top of the card because it's coated. Watercolour markers would work on your smooth card, like your stamping card, uh, on your craft card, on the black card but on a coated card like this it would just sit on the top of them and it wouldn't dry so again you know fit for purpose choose the right thing for the job otherwise you just get frustrated oh I had a major accident again when I was prepping yesterday Joe. oh no and do it, tell I've done it before which is so frustrating you think I'd have learned from the first time and I have to laugh at myself because when I was teaching it was the one thing that I used to tell the children not to do at any cost you mustn't leave your paintbrush stood in the jar of water and I used to drill that into them because when you reach across the table and you knock the paintbrush it knocks the water over, doesn't oh, it? Oh, and that's exactly well, what Well, I was going for the ink pad this way and caught said paintbrushes and knocked water over. Oh. Over yourself? Over the mat. Oh, So nice. my list that I've got for the show, you know the show pole, is a very nice sh shade of tinted pink. Oh. Because the water was pink where, of course, I'd had pink paint in it, hadn't I? Uh, and, and literally, yeah, it just went everywhere. It went underneath my glass mat. And oh gosh, it was just like, why did you not learn from the first time? Take your own advice and not leave the brushes in the, uh, in the, jo oh, yeah, in the jug. So again, I'm just going to do a little bit because I've got one that I've already prepped up. But you can see when you add it to the, I've done the butterflies. I quite like the butterflies, actually. Uh, this one, I've done the lettering on here, but I like, I'm just going to add a little bit to this one as well because I've gone a bit further with that but I like those wings done in the the colour are we okay for time oh yeah we've got an over an hour left brilliant yet, so let me just do this one onto here then because I like the uh 
I like those little wings in the pink. So again, whatever colour scheme, I've actually got some paper from that beautiful um, Enchanted Dreams paper pad, which is why I've gone all dreamy with the pinks and the lilacs on this one. So again, you know, use that. I, uh, I had a lovely lady message me the other day, and, you know, she says, I get stuck where to start, Jan. She says, I, I sort of get a blank and I don't know where to start. But yeah, sometimes it's the, if I know that I want to use a certain paper pad, that might be the basis of where the colour scheme comes from. If I haven't got a paper, then I might just be in, you know me pink first every time I have to step away from the pink um, but yeah you know all sorts of different things that inspire you how to put things together and then I've just taken a bit of our lovely silver glitter card there I love this stuff and we're going to pop this behind here and stick it down so that through all the bits that we've cut out you've got that lovely sort of shiny glimmer from the silver silver glitter you know, card the is just so classy isn't it and the, sil and the glitter card behind it it's just like a marriage made in heaven isn't it so on the back of here i'm going to go with two different glues i'm going to bring in my dotty tape pen and my wet glue and i will explain why so where we've got all these delicate sections near the uh, the lettering i'm just going to cover those with some of the dots and over those not over the wings here because the little wings will then extend when we get it into the other side and again uh, it's just coming up to this line here so i don't need to put any glue at the top so where all those little delicate areas are with that i want to make sure that all these little pieces have got some some glue so that they stick down and then round the outside of it I'm going to use some of the wet glue because when you're working with glitter card, the wet glue will seep into the glitter and you get a really good bond with the glue. So again, just along the perimeter of the card, so across the top here, and I'm stopping where that natural line is underneath the letters because the card's just going to go behind there. So again, we'll go all the way around here with the wet glue, minding those wings so that we don't get glue on the wings there and just make sure that it's all got a nice covering on there. And then what I'm going to do is probably do it this way will be easier to just line up the bottom here and pop that behind it so that you've got that nice silver piece. And wherever you've got your dots, just give them a good press down. And then you've got that lovely sort of silver peeping through there. Okay. Right, so let me just put the top back in the glue so that it doesn't dry out. And then I've got a piece of that lovely paper that we're going to pop on the bottom there. So I'll go back to my tape pen to add that on to the front there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use this as the front panel of our easel design. So again, I'm just going to lay that one down underneath the design there. The thing is that strikes me about all of these uh, projects, Jan, none of them are sort of overly elaborate, are they, or too difficult to put together. I think they're really accessible, these dies. If you are someone that is maybe newer to crafting, I think you'd be able to do all of these techniques so far, but get really stunning cards. Uh, this, is the, this is what I love about crafters' products, and I think we were talking about this earlier, about the fact that the whole team are crafters going right up to the top with Leanne and Sarah they're all crafters they know what we're looking for and I think that does make quite a big difference and it does it allows people to make really nice show-stopping cards you know you think how on earth has that been done somebody that doesn't know anything about crafting and die cutting machines you can't cut that out with a pair of scissors or a craft knife I'd, some people might be able to but I couldn't and you want that wow factor but it may be the first couple of cards that you've made using an edgeable like this and you get this kind of result and the person that you're gifting it to is literally blown away by it and it just gives you a real sense mm. of confidence to carry on then with your crafting so again, you were talking about these earlier, Joe, those yeah, pieces in the, in the book, yeah, in the paper pad. So literally just cut it down to the, uh, the quarter size and I'm going to use that one inside here as my piece for the inside of the, uh, the card for the base there. So literally, a little bit of tape on that one. I think sometimes the hardest part is working out which side of the paper you're going to use. But the butterflies linked in nicely with the decor on that particular die. So again, that one's going to go in the bottom there. 
and then we're going to pop this one on the front here to make the front part of the easel so again I just need glue and I tend to go for the front of the card rather than the back of that piece otherwise I'll end up with glue all over it and realize that I only needed it halfway up so top tip is to actually glue this piece and then you can line it all up so again I'm just going to open it out so I can see where the edge of the card is and line the base of that up with the base of the card and give that a good rub into place then turn it over make sure it's sealed and then we've literally got the beginnings of that card there all right so we've also got a piece of ribbon that we can wrap around here now we could have done that before i stuck it down jan but seeing as i've forgotten again we'll just pop it on the inside there i get that giddy about getting things put together and i'm like this at home so again we'll pop a little bit of the make sure that's nice and straight across the front there okay and i think i will just chop the ends off there just to neaten it up a little bit as i say ideally that would have been better stuck down before i put that piece together and then again the lady that was asking about the bows if i can just show you on this one what i mean when you've tied it can you see how i've pulled them out straight there oh yeah rather than if i was making one with the tails hanging down i would bring it down as i tie it and it's almost molding where you want those ribbons to go and then the little fish tails literally fold your ribbon in half and just snip into it at an angle to give you the little fish tails and it will lie nice and flat on your project then like so if that's what you're wanting okay and then the last thing we need to do with an easel is to pop we're going to put the sentiment inside here but we need to raise this up to stop that easel card sliding so i've just got some foam pads that we can pop on the back of there so one and i probably don't need a full one so we'll just clip one of those in half and then this is going to raise it up sufficiently that it's going to stop that piece from sliding so wherever you decide you want this to finish and I want some of those butterflies showing there in the middle and then I'm just going to pop that in this in fact we'll go right for the center of the design there stick that one down and then you can see how that then stops that one from uh, from tipping forwards so again you've got the butterflies on the inside and then you've got that die doing all the work on the front there so Amazing. that's our easel design. Yep. How fabulous. One of so many different things you'll be able to do. Remember, you can do all of these different concepts with all the different dies uh, that you have in here because they are edibles. Remember, all the edible techniques that you're already creating are going to be suitable to do with these as well. So there's hours and hours and hours of vegetable masterclasses available to you already right now over on our website. You can go and watch those totally free of charge. So you've got so much inspiration to get you started with these. What I love about them as well is that they are big and bold. So if you are making a lot of cards, you need a quick card. I think you can run these through and create something that's a real showstopper in not much time. If you want to be a more elaborate, you want a paper piece, you want to do inky techniques in the background, yeah, you can still do all of those things as well. Let me take you through the designs you've got then, or the sentiments, I should say. I love that the designs uh, echo the sentiment itself as well. So we've got the happy birthday in this one here. This here is the just for you, with those gorgeous butterflies. Uh, you've got the with all my love, with those roses around there. Congrats, you did it, as you can see. Uh, we've almost sort of like garden florals, aren't they, around there? This one here is on your special day, and you will also get this one here, which is your spe is special friend, which is fantastic. So do make sure you grab a hold of those. Very busy, a quarter uh, of our launch stock now sold out and gone. So really, really busy on that. Something else we launched uh, earlier today, uh, brand new today, of course, is this week's Get It, Got It, Good. Uh, so, of course, you've got the two advanced discovery kits. Buy one, get one half price. So you're going to get the Art of Illustration and also Adventures in Colour, which is fantastic. Everything you need in here to get you started. So you've got the pens, the art liners, you've got the worksheets in here, but you've also got all the know-how as well. You've got four instructions on how to get the most out of your alcohol markers, which is fantastic. Buy one, get one half price, which is amazing. They make great gifts. Uh, $29.98, $41.94 as a platinum member. Uh, you should be, individually, they're $24.99 each 
or uh, $34.95 in the US. So for not much more, for what, five pounds or dollars more as a platinum member, you get both of them, which is fantastic. Lots and lots of love coming in for all of Dran's creations. Um, oh, Mary Lee says, hooray, a John sighting. He was here, wasn't he? Muscling in on my patch. Just sneak in there, didn't he? Honestly. They? I don't like it because it always highlights how short I am, Dan, because <laughs> he comes in and like, you can only see like, uh, you can only see up, it's, like he's completely out the top of the shot. Uh, Susan says, thank you for reminding the reminder about placing the die for best pressure uh, and Eleanor saying what a beautiful uh, creation that was there. I'll tell you what else I need to remind you about. Very busy on the opaque ink pad collection. So remember this is our opaque ink pads. These are the ones that you can also not only do the blending and the colouring with but you can also do uh, your heat embossing with these as well. And what you'll get in here is parakeet, green topaz, misty morning, Chinese red, uh, you'll get orange, fuchsia, pale fig, Plum Jam, Spring Meadow, this one here is the Pink Tulip, we've got Crushed Velvet, Ocean Blue, and also Lemon Tonic as well. £50 or $70, you're paying for 10 and getting three for free there, which is excellent. We've got some A3 cardstock on. Always busy when we bring you the A3 cardstock. Bring you a lot of A4, it's not all that often we're able to bring you the A3 though in the Centura. Now this one here is your Snow White Hint of Gold. Uh, that you are looking at firstly. So it's got that really lovely sort of gold undertone to it, which is amazing. So you're going to get that one in there. You will also then get the ivory uh, in here as well, which is fantastic. It is the double-sided uh, ivory that you've got. And the double-sided is amazing uh, for larger card blanks. If you want to make your card blanks, you're going to get uh, that on the, you've got the um, finish on the inside and the outside, 20 sheets of that. And then this one I absolutely love, this is the pastel uh, in the uh, Centura as well. So it's got that lovely blue color in there, this gorgeous, rich yellow, wonderful, fresh, vibrant sage green and also the pink in there as well. 27.72 or 41.22. So to get that with a 25% saving is really awesome. We don't often get to bring that to you uh, or as much as we would like. Got to change the details back to the brand new launch for you. Remember, it is the first opportunity uh, you've had today to get, your, um, to get your hands on it. Let me just quickly give you an idea of some of the different things you can do uh, with these because there's lots of different concepts that can be achieved using these. I'm going to share some of those with you now. So uh, using it in an aperture, of course we talk about it being an edgeable over the edge of a card, but it could be over the edge and into an aperture. This one here is a double cut, so you've actually got cut in the top and then another separate panel added around the bottom there. It works brilliantly for things like your easel cards, anything where you want to have that detail over the edge, you can do that one just there. This one here is your diorama card, as you can see, just here. Uh, also think about using it on your steppers. This is a, a, a double stepper card, as you can see. Just I'm very fingers and thumbs today, Jan. I don't know what's going on. Uh, you've also got a fold back card. Works brilliantly uh, for this style of card. Uh, and again, you, I love these because this is just showing you what it's like. Just cut into plain uh, white or black and white cardstock. So think about when you do add your design papers into here and you start to do things like adding your inks in there and your backgrounds, how awesome these are going to look. Again, another fabulous easel there uh, with some design papers added. I love this illusion tent fold that's been done with some acetate there. I think that is an mm. awesome, awesome card. Really fabulous. And then finally one more, just to show you. I actually love this with it centered just to the top of the card. Just cut in, very, very simple, very effective. And I think that's what you can achieve with these. Because so much of that intricate detail is within the die itself, the die is doing the work for you. You've just got to choose what ink is going to ink these up with, what design papers are you going to use, uh, and then you're good to go to make some fabulous card. Uh, Diane says, I learned so much from Jan. Jan is truly the best teacher, so calm and encouraging. Uh, and Mary Beth saying how. Uh, I really like that last card that you've created there as well. Right, what would you like to show us next, Jan? Right, we're going to go with all oh, my love this time. And I absolutely love this one and I think part of it was the papers that we chose um, I've gone for um, the Bell Countryside papers in this one and oh my goodness I just love that paper pad so yeah we're going to pair the two together and we're going to go Z fold this time okay so again just taking it on a step from the easel card we're going to cut the design into the actual Z fold part of the card so again exactly the same principle with the, uh, the die we've got 
part that cuts away at the top. So if anybody's just joined us and, uh, and you've not seen the beginning of the show, <coughs> just to explain a little bit about what I mean by an edgeable, if you haven't seen them before, in that it starts the cut line here where the little notch is and it finishes at this side where the notch is. So all round here, from one notch to the next is going to cut out and free that die and then anything below here is going to cut into your cardstock. So what we're actually going to do this time, I've got the, um, if I show you my card base, the, the traditional side of the, um, the, the, the Z fold card is that you end up with two folds the same. So we've literally folded in half and then scored and folded the top piece back. And then literally, we're going to turn that bottom piece over and the Z fold fits together like so. So you can see it creates that nice little shape inside your card. And what I want to do is cut this into the part that's the actual Z. So I'm going to leave the card blank to one side and I've just measured this the right size for this to fit onto the front there. So again, uh, just going to pop that, I think, up to the top rather than the bottom and again <coughs> I would always recommend taping them into place it's something that I've got used to doing now and it, it does save that frustration of oh the dies moved and you've got it come out like this with half of it missing and I've done that so many times that I've learned the hard way to literally get everything taped into place so again we're just going to pop that along there like so and again, tape it to that top edge because that's going to be the piece that we cut away. And again, bring those plates back in. And you can see that all these, the actual die themselves, will fit into your Gemini Junior or your MIDI plates. It just depends on what's happening with the rest of the project, which is why I've got my, uh, my large plates out there. So again, put the shims in top plate on there and then we're going to pass that through our Gemini and let it do its work it's going to cut all that detail out but that bottom section just to cut into the base of the uh, the actual card stock so I've got white stamping card here and then I've cut the die again in some gold satin mirror card and we're actually going to put that behind it to create like a little shadow in the gold so again, you know, I'm doing the same things and I'm conscious that I'm doing the same things, but we're going to get the inks out again and just add that little bit of detail because I think it just makes such a difference to them rather than leaving it just plain. So again, first job is to take that tape off them, get that out of the way. And then we're going to bring, and this time, again, I've gone with the colour scheme in the paper and I've gone for those lovely opaque inks again in Plum Jam and green topaz so again i've got my dobers out to match those colors and we'll get those at the ready and then let's just have a look at the one that are I'd those already dobers done. in stock at the moment i'm gonna ask johnny because they just oh. we can never keep them in stock can we we'll they let you know in the back end. Do you know what's it. always good to know though if something is out of stock on the website you can pop your email address in yeah. underneath it I look like a really, I look like a really small person, don't I, in this box with this jumper on? <laughs> <laughs> Got lovely long legs. These <laughs> tights are fabulous. Um, it's a shame you can't see my shoes. Hang on. Oh, there oh, you go. He's got amazing red shiny <laughs> boots on. There you go. Yep. Uh, love a Cuban heel. Um, what was I saying before I got very sidetracked? Uh, yeah, if it's sell, something sold out on the website, you can put, there's a little box underneath, you can put your email address in the box underneath, we email you when it comes back into stock, so you don't have to keep checking back, which is always it's clever, handy. isn't it, how it very works? Very clever. And then I'm just going to swap that for the green and where we've got those little leaves. As I say, they're just small details, but it's amazing what, it dif what difference it makes when we actually take the die away. So again, just, you can take much more time at home with these. Take your time and just, all I'm doing is just pushing, because these have got like a little foam tip on them, just pushing that into the, the gap in the die. And again, it's just bringing in that extra detail there so again let's just get those away and pop those back into the uh, I just need to hang on to that one for a second and then as I say take I found that the die brush anything that's intricate like this the die brush comes into its own so just over the top it starts to pop the pieces out but the main reason I'm doing it is to help 
release that die from the cardstock because there's all those little tiny curly sections the last thing you want to do is have this stick and rip some of the design you see how well that's come off now we've took the um the uh, we've done the die the, the brush over the top of it the rest of the pieces if there is anything still stuck in place you can either bring the die brush back in to release them or there's always the pokey tool i know that's a favorite i know some people say that it's very therapeutic sitting and popping all those little pieces out okay so again you can see we've just got this little bit left over at the the, the, the top here so i'm going to take this down here we're going to actually cut a whole section of this away but i'm going to do it with the scissors first of all and just because we've got that little tiny piece now i'm going to come in with the snips and take it to the edge you can see that bit comes away now all right so again let's just get all those out of the way to one side and you can see how we've got this detail but what i want to do is go over those roses as well and just bring out some of the color now this is not necessarily the bit through the dye but again you know there's no rule as to where you can put the color i just wanted to add a little bit of detail into those as well and then i can even bring the green one back because i've just spied another leaf there you know wherever you want to pop that color it's your design you you choose what you want to do and just for those of you that didn't see last time because it's water-based ink i'm just going to spray the dye with a little bit of water and then the old cloth comes into action you can see how much it gets used all right that. my new old, new old new one yep and you can see I feel they like we could up. do a pop we could do a, like a parody of papa's got a brand new bag to jan's got a brand new rag <laughs> what do you think so <laughs> to get uh, uh, go grief ben on the plot well, well, jan Joe, absolutely. but you can see they come up perfect it's not damaging the dies at all to do that so we've got that piece here and then what i want to do is actually take this level all the way across so if i had my ruler with me i would use the metal edge ruler but i don't think i've got it with me so again i'm just going to show you what i mean because i've got one that's already prepped but use something to give you a straight line and basically we want to take this all to the same level so i'm just going to cut all this away so we've now got our z fold part that's going to go with the card and i can just see a sneaky little bit here at this side that we need to snip to where the die cut is and just take that out so this is as far as we've got so far okay so what we're going to do i'm just put the top on the the knife first of all keep that nice and safe and then as i say i've cut out exactly the same just in some of that i love the guts one of my favorite I, I want to ask leanne to do this just in a pack all on its own the satin gold really this is beautiful. out of the luxury cardstock pack but not the shiny one not the glitter one this is the other one and i love it but can you see how the dyes actually created that embossed detail in there and is that with it? you embossing it Jan, no that's, that's just, just a normal pass? that's just a normal pass through the machine that's the pressure in the gemini that it's actually created you, it does it on the white but you can't see it as well so this is a good example to show you how that actually works there and what I want to do is fit this behind here so that we get that little bit of a shadow going on if I bring this over the white now somebody letting fireworks off yeah at four o'clock in the afternoon but isn't it also isn't it raining out there can you see how that just creates that nice little shadow so what I'm going to do, because I cut this one with the guillotine, I'm just going to bring, whoops a daisy, just going to bring this one back in because this is a nice straight edge on here. And then we're literally going to pop this behind and then cut away any surplus. So again, out comes that dotty tape pen. So again, come in the direction of your die. So again, because the letters are coming up from this section, I'm going to go this way with the tape pen nice and light so that you're not pushing the dots through the cardstock and again whatever way your die is going that's the way that I'm running the dots and I want them over the gaps here as well I'm not sure what's more upsetting Jan people letting fireworks off in the rain or the fact that it's pitch black dark at quarter past four. Oh, I know well, I didn't realize it was getting this dark this yeah, early it when seems to have happen? gone all of a sudden over the last few days yeah I think it gets darker earlier in the nook here than it does at home in Manchester. Quite possibly. Mm. Yeah. So again, what I'm going to do is these, because they've been cut with the die, they'll line up perfectly. But then I tend to come down a fraction 
and to the right a fraction. And that's all I want to do with it, just to create a little bit of that gold showing in places so that we've got that shadow. And then once I'm happy with it, we'll press that into place. Okay, so I'm just going to put um, another piece over there so that I can give it a good press down. And the same on the back of the letters. And then what I'm going to do is take away any surplus now. So because we've got this on the edge here, I'm just going to use that cardstock with my nice long scissors and cut that so that it's not sticking out at the side. So a piece there, a piece across the bottom, and then this is the piece that I'm going to use on the front of the card now. So again, just tidy that one up if you've got any pieces hanging. And you can see how we've got that lovely shadow effect there and then I've got a little tiny bit of um, design paper that I'm going to pop in the gap here so we're just going to put that nicely across the front again a little bit of the uh, tape runner will work fine for that one so this is going to go if I turn it around that way I can just get that in nicely just measured that little tiny piece to fit in just to give a little bit of decoration at the bottom there Okay, and then I've also got some pieces to dress this side as well. So again, you've got that lovely paper pad there. You can see we've got one, two there. That one's a little bit that way. That's better, yep. So again, I'm going to stay with the... Uh, the t I, I flick. There's no rhyme or reason with the, the glues. Sometimes I go for the uh, all-purpose. Sometimes I go for the tape runner. And there's no, I can't explain... At what point I make a decision to swap? Do you choose the glue or does the glue choose it you? It chooses me, I think, Joe. I think that's a very good way of putting it. Because, yeah, sometimes I'll pick this one up if I'm working cardstock, paper to cardstock. Sometimes I pick the tape runner up. It, there's no, literally no rhyme or reason to it. So these both work equally well. I think the glue comes into its own if you're not so hot on positioning things. The tape will actually grab quite quickly, whereas the glue, the wet glue, gives you that little bit of wriggle room that gives you uh, that confidence to place things down and it be you know be able to wriggle it into place for you so we've got that piece at the ready I've got some more pieces just excuse me one second because two of them flew onto the floor when I put something down so I'll just retrieve them and we're going to decorate the inside as well but this oh just look this is just a section from one of those 12 by 12s and again the double sided I, this is me all over this lovely distressed and splattered these are the kind of things i like to make as backgrounds so the fact that i've got them in papers and again because it's a bigger area you know i'm going to grab the glue because we can it works equally well and it gives me time to just wriggle that piece as i say into place so again if you're new to crafting get yourself when we've got the bundles on where we put a bit of everything in it's a bit like a mix and match Try one of those and get all the glues going and try them out. See what suits you, which one finds you, which one chooses you. And then you go with that one. So again, just spread that glue out nicely underneath there. Make sure it's all pressed down. And the, oh my goodness, thank you so much. Our John's here with the coffee run. Thank you. So again, I'm just going to pop these on here. And again, we'll go with the uh, the Kalal. In fact, I want that one that way. We've got them inked up that way. That's better. Yep, just making sure the right. I can't stop the right touching way. my boots. Excuse me? Can't stop touching my boots. Your boots? Very I wondered tactile. what you said then. Me boots. Your boots. I, I misheard you there, Joe. Oh, steady. <laughs> Saucy. <laughs> Oh, they're sequiny and they're I love very, those red boots. My boots are made oh, of this is a show. Kinky boots, aren't they? The red boots. They are, yeah. yeah. Perfect look. I love them. But I can't say, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, <dear>. <laughs> oh <sorry>. Oops. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Don't set me it, off Rebecca's again. asking, is that the vintage diary paper, Jan? No, this one's actually uh, Bell Countryside, Bell not Countryside. Bell Manor. Well, I call it Bell Manor all the time. I don't know oh, why I think it's called yeah, that. Yeah, that was, I, we were both on the same boat that day, Joe. But yeah, Bell Countryside. 
Uh, yeah, my theory has been confirmed, um, Jan. Your theory? Yeah, it is still light in Manchester. Ah, there you and go. So maybe it's still light in my neck of the woods as well then. pitch black outside here in the northeast. There you go. That's scary, isn't it? That is funny, isn't it? So again, just on the um, outside of this Z-fold, and I'm going to go back to the tape pen. If you want to grab that Bell Countryside, details there on your screen, 14.99 or 19.95. 24 sheets of gorgeous double-sided papers there. So I'm just And it's pop got that. Mayo the horse in it as well. It's got Mayo the horse? Yeah, Mayo, that's what he's called, the horse in there. Do you All know right. why? Go Mayonnaise. It's what? Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise, oh yeah, my days. I'm too, too slow on the uptake sometimes. That's what we renamed him. He's been called Paul, but we've, called, we've renamed him Mayo now. Don't know why he was called Paul, I'm not sure. And then again, I'm going to go back to my dotty tape pen because I've got areas that I don't want to push the glue through. <laughs> and again, I'm just doing half of it because I've got the other half. And I'm missing the letters. In fact, we can probably put a little bit of glue on those letters that are going to cover that uh, piece you know there, it's but you just know you... the half to go on this side here. Just, you know that the snorting's getting out of hand. Someone's just sent me a pig nose emoji and a laughing face emoji. <laughs> just those two. Oh dear, that's funny. Oh dear. Okie dokes. And then again, I love the ribbons. I've got drawers full of ribbons. So again, you see this time, I've actually pulled these pieces down so that when I finish the tie, they're actually facing down. So we've got those tails at the bottom this time. So we're gonna pop that one on the top. And then I've just got, I've kept them in the packet so that I didn't end up with them rolling away. But again, we've just got some pearls there because we can. Do you know, I don't know what's going off. I've lost them now. They're all giggling away in my ear. What's <laughs> happening? What did I miss? <laughs> You, uh, <laughs> you said you. I'm going to have to tell you, aren't I? All I've got in my ear is. Well, I have to tell you. You said you had drawers. You had drawers full of ribbons, which I thought sounded like a little bit like an innuendo. Well, I didn't you realise I, was, I you? was in the. I didn't realise I was in the little box, so I just did a very subtle little. <laughs> <laughs> which indicates that there may have been an innuendo there. Oh, I just didn't realise that I was in there in the box doing a little. Honestly, I've missed you, Joe. <laughs> So oh. yeah, three on there, and then we're going to pop three along here. I just think it lends itself to the pearls rather than the gems on this particular one. So again, one, <laughs> sets of three. It's shocking, honestly. We wouldn't change it for the world, oh, Joe. I'm too much today. It was all going so well, Joe. It was. Five we were being ago. very good, weren't we? <laughs> Doesn't hold out much hope for seven o'clock, does it? And again, let's move all those bits out of the way now. And you can see, I just love that. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. This so again, is beautiful. With all my love, we've got those papers doing the talking. And if I turn that round for you to stand it up, you've got that lovely Z fold design there. So, yes. I love the beautiful. amount of texture that you've got. Yeah. The texture's in the paper, but then also having that drop shadow gives it even just more texture, doesn't it? gives that little bit more detail, yeah. Really It's worth beautiful. that extra cut, yeah. Fantastic. And quite a simple technique to, to achieve. Yeah, it's, it's easy to do, yeah. Let me take you back through the six different sentiments that you've got in here. I think you've got something to cover literally every occasion. You've got happy birthday, just for you. We then have, uh, with all my love, you've got congrats, you did it. Uh, on your special day, and special friend. Right, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to check out. I'm gonna give myself a chance to calm down. <laughs> so whilst we all do that, let's share you the details of Club Inspire. Welcome to Club Inspire, the crafters companion community where you can feed your crafty obsession. Join our fantastic loyalty club today and receive 20% of your first order. We'll also give you 250 points to help get you started. Other benefits of joining Club Inspire include exclusive special offers and discounts for Club Inspire members only, exclusive sneak peek previews of brand new product launches, and of course the Club Inspire community group on Facebook where you can access exclusive content such as downloads, offers and inspiration. And of course, you can chat and share your makes with other members. 
you'll receive one point for every pound, dollar or euro you spend. And the more points you receive, the more benefits you'll unlock. So what are you waiting for? Sign up, join the club and start rewarding yourself today. Achieve crisp, precise, and perfect die cutting results every time with the Gemini Accessories Plastic Shim. The idea behind the plastic shim is that it creates a thicker plate combination, offering an even more precise die cutting result with each pass. Simply pop a plastic shim between your cutting plates and then roll through your Gemini die cutting machine and voila, an amazing precise cut every time. Plastic shims work really well with detailed or thin metal dies. So if intricate cutting is your thing, then the Gemini Accessories Plastic Shim is your best friend. Their plastic shims size to work with a whole range of Gemini machines. We have some awesome deals going, so visit Crafters Companion website and find out more. We've had to make some changes to our shipping charges and we want to keep you informed. With continued pressure on domestic shipments around mainland US, we've had to temporarily increase the cost of our regular 6 to 10 working day standard shipping service from $9.99 to $12.95 and our free shipping threshold from $100 to $125. We also have some really great news to tell you. We've introduced a brand new shipping service called Express Delivery. This is a fully tracked door-to-door -door service which takes three to seven working days and costs $19.95. This option means you'll get your crafty goodies in your hands sooner, meaning less waiting and more crafting. We're also upgrading delivery services for our gold and platinum Club Inspire members who will now receive priority delivery on all of their orders. And if that wasn't enough, we've upgraded these orders to our new express three to seven day service. Your patience and understanding throughout this very busy time has been amazing. So we'd just like to say a huge thank you and we look forward to chatting to you again very soon. Ah, oh, there we go. We're all calmed down. Back in the room, Jan, aren't we? Right, I want to take you through some of the amazing paper pads uh, we've got available for you uh, on the show. Lots of these. Uh, these have all been hand selected, in fact, because they work so well with the edibles, the everyday edibles on the show. The Enchanted Dreams is the first one. Uh, one of the most recent Sarah Signature launches. Really lovely. It's a beautiful uh, array of colours and imagery. Things like unicorns in here. Lots of floral elements. Uh, you've got the hydrangeas. There's rainbows in here as well. I mean, it really is quite a lovely fantasy, um, but very sort of classy paper pad, that one. So that's your Enchanted Dreams. You then have this one here, which is your Summer Sunset. Love this one. So you've got a really, all of this one here, 200 GSM. It's kind of borderline card weight, uh, but all pearlescent as well. Really lovely orangey tones all the way through this one. I love that each design paper has a sort of background to go with it as well. So like a faux inky background uh, on there. Next up uh, is this one here. This is your Masquerade Ball. Love this one. Just beautiful. It makes me want to go to a Venetian ball makes me want to just, you know, I, I've not well, been when ever we were doing... doing uh, when we did the craft along on Friday, we had Susie with us, who happens to live in New Orleans, and she was telling us all about Mardi Gras, because I said it reminded me of that kind of festive, yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that kind of uh, festivities. Yeah, so she was telling us all about Mardi Gras with it. It was brilliant. Uh, Nicola wants to know if I've ever been to a Venetian ball. I haven't, but I am up for going to any ball, so if you want to invite me... Football? Uh, a masked ball. Oh, a, sorry. A, a, a what? <laughs> A mask football. ball, not football, no, Jan. <laughs> I do want to go to the football actually, oh. but somewhere where I can get dressed up and have a yeah. cocktail. If there's a sit I'll down, put your red shiny boots on. If there's a sit down meal involved, I mean, I'll leave now. <laughs> um, <laughs> you've got all of these different uh, designs in this one. So this one here is your decadent decor that we're looking at. Really lovely floral tones in here. Lots of paisleys. Again, that pearlescent shine that you've Beautiful, got on the paper is absolutely. Yeah. Uh, incredible, 19.99 or 24.95. If you want to get your hands on that one, just there. Uh, right, so we are going to change those details back to the main collection for you. Six brand new dies for you available right now. Remember, they are all edibles as well, so it means that you can do all those edible techniques that you have already done. Uh, right, which one are we going to focus on next, then, Jan? 
Well, just for the benefit of people that have joined us, you know, not everybody, I know not everybody can make it at the top of the show. So we did show you some extra samples for inspiration. I think it's always good, you know, you can always come back to the shows, you can bookmark them, you can save them. You can see my demos again, but you can see what the design team have been up to and look at their interpretations as well. So for anybody that's joined us, you know, part way through the show, we'll just have a look at these again. So again, this is similar to the one that I did at the beginning where we cut into the top of the, uh, the card, just keeping it nice and simple. And you can see that a lot of the team have gone with the inking as well. They just lend themselves to having that inking through the uh, through the die there. Again, using your papers just to help with the decoration. And then why not pop it onto the top of a stepper card? So again, we've got the lovely little steps at the front. We've combined it with a, a different sentiment here. So this is a, a different one. It's not part of the kit. These are the ones that we're focusing on. But again, you know, just popping it up. It's been cut. You can see the mechanism there where it's been cut out. And if you don't like this element in the back, pop a little matte layer on the back as well. You know, it just, it just, just sort of strengthens it and it covers up any of those little pieces. But I just love the, all the little balloons popping up and everything. And then again, we've just done the Z fold, but this is the square Z fold. So again, just cutting it. And this one's been cut twice. We just cut it into the front section here. But again, you know, it's been measured so that it fits into that second section as well. Gorgeous there in that lovely peachy tones. I think this one's from Caring Thoughts, the paper there and then again we've got with all my love so again get it the right way up Jan so we'll go that way yep uh, again reds and whites you know typical colors there for Valentine's Day it's not going to be long once Christmas is out the way we're going to have Valentine's Day things in the shops aren't we so uh, everything speeds along the minute that's done it's Easter eggs and then before we know it we're back to Christmas again aren't we Cool, blimey, I've just lost a year of my life. <laughs> Whew, just I mean, a well, year reasons yeah. to be cheerful, eh, Jan? Yeah. But again, you know, fussy cut some of those little bits, the snippability in those. So we cut it a second time and just overlaid those over the top there. Glitter them up, you know, cut them out your glitter card, use your glitter pens. Again, congrats, you did it. I love it. What did you do? What did you do that earned a card? I think it's great that. Congrats, you did it. Our Nicola's saying she got out of bed this morning. Congrats, Aww. Nick. <laughs> Joe, remember to take the bins out. Yeah, yeah I, I actually through, did it. You I were got through my to-do list. Yeah, you were fabulous for another day. You did it. And again, you know, just looking at the different colour schemes, same die, but by popping it into the black card there, it looks totally different. I love that against the uh, that olive green card. This one's a bit sticky on the back. There we go, you see? And then we've used, like, like I said, you get a freebie. The letters that have actually die cut out of here, we've just used these at the top. So you did it twice on that one. And then I've also got Special Friend there as well, which is a really pretty one with those little dragonflies and all these little uh, wings all pop out. Even the one further down here, you can see how they all pop up to give you that sort of detail there. Absolutely beautiful. So really pretty. So let's pop those to one side. And my last one's going to be that congrats. Congrats, you did it, Jan. You got through all five demos. So let's have a look then. We're going to take that one out of its packaging. And again, same concept, just around, they're all roughly the same size. So we've said, you know, almost six inches across and they range from about three and a half to four inches, depending on the size. This one's got some smaller letters. Some of them have got all the tall letters across. So around about three and a half to four inches in height. And again, made to fit on any edge of your card. So this last one that we're gonna do, we're gonna make one that's got a slight curved dome front on it. So I've actually cut my piece of paper at the ready here a bit piece of cardstock at the ready and I've scored the edges here this is the bit that's going to wrap around and create that sort of like slight domed effect so what I want to do is cut this into the front here and I've just scored myself a couple of lines which is where I want to line up those little notched edges so you can just see on the edge of the die here there's a bit sticking out at this side and a little bit just sticking out at this side and that's where the cutting line finishes so I'm going to line that up with the score line and I'm going to tape that into place again just so that it doesn't move when I pop it through my Gemini so I've got e about equal distance at either side and then just popping that onto the top and then again we're going to let that Gemini do the work so I'll bring the plates back in give them a spin again and again, wherever you can, like I was saying before, if your project allows it, get that die vertical rather than it going through horizontal. There are much more cutting points across 
than there are when you have it in like a portrait style. Less cutting points across this way. So just wherever you can, pop it round. And then we're going to put those shims in place. Flip that one again. Do the housekeeping and then pass that through our Gemini there. <coughs> Fabulous. And then uh, again, I've cut this. Sorry, Joe. That's right. No. I've cut this one. Oh, they're fighting. Cut this one again out of some green cardstock. So I've just run the die through again out of some pearlescent green. And we're going to do a little bit of that drop shadowing again when we pop them together. So just have a look at that one. Just make sure that this, if the bits are stuck to your plate, always clean those Gemini plates. And again, you can see that detail there where it's all cut perfectly. So again, before we dislodge that die, we've got lots of different colours this time. We're going to have a play with those inks for one more time because I just love the effect it gives. So taking the tape away because it's just covering a couple of the bits where I want to ink. And then I've picked out, because I'm going to use papers from that beautiful um, rainbow pad here. Absolutely gorgeous. We're going to go really vibrant. So we've got some of the pearlescent pieces and then we've got those rainbow papers. So I've looked at the colours in there and I've picked out, and you see the rainbow there, we've got plum jam at the top. I've got orange next. Then we've got yellow. We've got a turquoise one. We've got a blue one and we've got the purple. So we've got all that spectrum there from the rainbow. I might not use them all, but I just thought I'd pick them out. Because we've got those gorgeous uh, inks to work with, why not let's have a go with them? So again, I've got my little daubers at the ready and we're just going to go through here again before we take that die from the, uh, the section. So we'll start at the top then with the plum jam and we'll do a little bit... And again, I've got one done. So uh, I think what I might do is actually bring the colours down. The uh, Now, our John's lurking. Oh, dear. <laughs> he's like, you're in What's shock, he John. It was lurking? like, <laughs> <laughs> stupid saying, shh. <laughs> <laughs> he was just creeping in the edge there. <laughs> what can we do for you, my love? Honestly. Well, I feel like you've, you've already hijacked the show now, John. Can you imagine just tell us what you're after? He was trying his best not what, to, and his head was broken. What do you want? Oh, bless it. Oh, stay steady. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> oh, we do have a laugh, honestly. So again, I'm just going to come down with the colours in that rainbow fashion. And actually, it's, I don't want to contaminate the daubers too much. But literally, as if we're mocking that rainbow and just bringing them down in the same colour order. So we've got the, uh, it's actually red, but uh, the plum fit that nicely. I don't know what he's looking for, Jam. No, down neither there. do I. It's still down there. Oh, he's out. It's fine. <laughs> what, what are you after, John? <laughs> Just wanted an ink pad. That's all he's after. Yeah. Okay, so again, we're just going to pop across with that yellow there. And again, just keep going with these through the colours. We've got the uh, the parakeet for the turquoise colour. So again, I don't want too much on there. So I just, I'm creating that sort of rainbow effect as we go down through the colours there. And then we've got the blue, which is that one. So I've got a mixture here. I've got some quick dry inks and I've got some um, opaque inks as well. So again, it doesn't really matter what you're using. It's just getting that ink into that design. Now the quick dry ones obviously are gonna dry faster than the pigments. So again, fit for purpose. If you're wanting to emboss over these colors, you need to make sure that they're all pigment inks. But just because I'm just gonna leave them as they are, then we're okay just mixing them up like that. And then the last one is that purple at the bottom there. Just a little bit. Okay, and if you do get any contamination on here, all I would do with them is take um, a wipe or even a piece of wet kitchen towel and literally just take off any excess until you're back to your normal colour. So Fantastic. don't worry if they do get contaminated. I can see a little bit of yellow on that one. So again, just take that excess off and you'll take it back. All right, so don't worry too much about it if you do get a bit on there. So again, let's move all those out of the way, clear up the ink 
off there. I'll hang on to that to clean the die with. And again, I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to go with that die brush and I've just got my hand underneath it. Now the brush actually comes with a sponge. So if you prefer to pop this on the sponge and then press the brush in, absolutely fine. I'm just using my hand under there to, to, to let me apply some pressure. And as I say, what I'm wanting to do, rather than necessarily move all the pieces, is actually dislodge the die so that we can take it away without doing any damage. So if you didn't have the brush, would you just use the release holes, Jan, or just with a poking yes, tool or something? Yes, if I didn't have a brush, there are plenty of release holes in there that you can literally just pop it through with, absolutely. And again, I'm just going to show you, I know I've done it a couple of times, but just for the benefit of anybody that's just started. I know you might think, oh my goodness, what's she done to her dye? But again, just a little bit of water on there. And because the water-based inks, it literally just all comes off. How so glorious. again, I'm using that wet one there, and then I've got my old cloth at the ready. And you can see how they just come perfectly back to normal, ready to use next time. So it doesn't damage those at all. And then we'll just get rid of any ret off there so that it doesn't get on the card. Move the bits out of the way and then look at what we've got. And I just think that rainbow effect is gonna echo those papers. So again, we need to pop our scissors where I'd done that score line here just to line it up. I'm gonna come from the edge and I'm gonna cut all the way up to where that die I started cutting to release it, yeah? And then flip it round. And again, I'm coming right from the edge of the card on that score line. The score line was just purely a marker for where to put the die. And then again, that top piece just pops away and you've got that lovely sort of rainbow cascade of colours going on there to, to sort of mimic the paper that we've got in. So I'm going to pop the side pieces in and give them a good burnish now i have got a little bit of ink here if i'd have taken a bit more time we could have actually got that where it wasn't uh, as much on the edge there now i did do this at home um i don't think it's that much different to be honest so i think we'll stick with the, this one's not got the ink at the side has it we'll use that one that's not got the ink at the side just as a little bit cleaner looking so again just reinforce those folds there and then what we're going to do is we're going to use that green layer that I cut and we're going to pop this inside but I've just made the white one a fraction it's only about a quarter of an inch not a mm. lot so that when we push this back together you're just ah. going to get that slight bow in between the two sections and that's what I wanted so again I'm going to run some tape um what we got left all my tape's getting low just run a little bit down here because I want to make sure that that doesn't move out of place. Don't forget as well, another show coming away a bit later today here on Crafters TV. So 7 p.m. in the UK, 2 p.m. East Coast, 11 a.m. West Coast. Uh, we've got Monday Makers for you, Christmas layering stamps on there. We've got the waterfalls, uh, scene builders. There's a brilliant Monday mega deal for you as well. All of that coming up at 7 p.m. slash 2 p.m. slash 11 a.m. Uh, with myself and Jan so I'm looking forward to that Jan. Yeah there's some nice things on that show so again I'm just going to pop that just slightly to one side so that I can see the green around it and then I want to pop that side in place bring it down a fraction and then I'm just going to wriggle that one back because it's you see how it's slightly longer there I want to bring this up to the score line before I stick this one down okay and you can see it's just created that little bit of a, a bow on it so let's pop the rest of the card together I've kept the card fairly simple again we've got that a5 size card with the tent fold on the top I'm going to put one of these papers on the inside and again I'm going to grab that collal because it's a nice big area we'll go with the uh, the wet glue there it just gives me a chance to sort of make sure everything's in place so not too much, but I can literally plop that down and then just wriggle it into place. And once I'm happy with it, just give it a nice press to squidge all that glue out and make sure it's all made contact with the card. And then I'm going to do the same on the front with those beautiful rainbows there. So again, just that matting and layering, bit of glue there. 
and then we're going to pop that one on the front so again get it down in the middle decide where it's going to go wriggle it into position and once you're happy with the position I tend to hold it with one hand and then make sure I just want to make sure that all that glue spread out underneath and it's made contact with the card so we've got our design in place okay and then this piece is actually going to go on the front and I've got another one which I'm just going to um, use my larger bone folder just gently to just give it a little bit of a curve so that it fits on the front of here so again just by running that bone folder underneath it can you see how it's just sort of trying to oh yeah perfect just manipulate the card that little bit and it'll help it because if it's flat you're going to have those end bits stuck out there. So again, we're going to use that collal because it will set nice and firm. Once it's dried, you get a real nice sort of firm finish to it. And then I'm literally going to pop this one across the front of that curve. We'll take it so that we've got a border on it as well. I'm going to press it flat to press it down make sure that glue's tight but again we've still got that so I'm just going to stick it down at the back there okay so again we'll go with the collal in fact I'm going to pop some glue dots over the um, letter in there because I don't want the glue to seep through so where the letters are we'll just lightly do that and again up onto the top it's so handy isn't it that dotting oh, honestly onto the it's magic bit. it's magic in a tape runner it really is. I love it. It just, they don't go through. As long as you're light-handed with it, they don't go through to the other side. They don't go, you know, if you're working on your glass mat, they don't go through on there. And then the rest of it, because I want a nice good bond there, I'm going to pop some of the collal on the back there. And then we're literally going to pop this in the centre. So because it's got the collal on, I can pop it down and just wriggle it if I need to. And again, I can press it down at one side, press the lettering down, and then let that bit free up and press this side down. I've sort of pushed it that way now so that we can get everything anchored. Okay. And again, you know, if you've got your, um, your gems, the little flowers just lend themselves to having some gems in the middle and things like that. But again, that glue just needs to dry off. You can see that there. But when we move this out of the way, let's turn this around for you. You can see you've got that sort of nice tent fold design. But when I just lift it, you can see how you've got that nice little bowed front there. So again, it may need a box or an envelop box if you were wanting to gift that to someone uh, because obviously it's not flat. But half the fun, you know, making the gift boxes, you could actually recreate that same sentiment on the front of the gift box so mm. that it matched. Mm. So yeah, that was number five. Oh, amazing. Congrats, I did it. Fabulous. <laughs> uh, did you want to get yourself ready for demo of the show, Jan? Yep, I will do. Uh, Gilmore say on YouTube, my money is still on Dro Joe growing his moustache faster than the others who happen to have an early start. Oh. We shall see, Gilmore. Uh, we have raised nearly £3,000 you know, in, in a few days. Yep. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, if you would like to sling some pennies our way for a good cause, uh, head over to my social media channels, Ben's social media channels. All the details uh, are there for you as well. So we've been raising uh, money for Crohn's and Colitis UK. So go and check that out. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to see how much we raise now, Jan. Honestly, we it's, thought we it's were raise. such a we good... Thought... And it's so close to our hearts mm. here at Crafters Companion, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, absolutely brilliant cause. And I'm we... just thrilled that it's done so well, Joe. We thought we were going to raise £1,000. We raised yeah. that in six hours, which is absolutely yeah. amazing. Uh, yeah, so go and check out my Facebook, Ben's Facebook. You'll see all the details for that. Karen saying I gave in and bought the set. I can see why you gave in and bought the whole set, Karen, <laughs> yeah. because they're <laughs> utterly, utterly fabulous. So I'll quickly just take you through those sentiments and what they are. So you've got, of course, Happy Birthday, which is this one here. I mean, they are going to be the sentiments that you're going to need to use for... I think you've got the majority of different occasions covered here yeah. with these. Just for you, with those beautiful butterflies. You've got With All My Love there as well with the roses. Uh, congrats, you did it, is this one here. We've also got On Your Special Day and, of course, Special Friend there as well. 49.15, for uh, Platinum members. Right, Jan, card of the show. Card of the show. Shall we get them lined up and have a vote? It's time for the card of the show show. Time for the card of the show show. Right, so right, crap, cracky. Top of the show, it seems a while ago now. We started off nice and simple then, just cutting into the front of the card. And we did the happy birthday with that lovely paper from the masquerade ball. So this is number one. 
Number two, we changed that cut to down the right-hand side of the card there, and we had those extra layers in with papers from that paisley pad. That was number two. Then we went on to the easel design using papers from that lovely Enchanted Dreams collection and we did that uh, pop-up from the easel there on that one. So that's number three. Number four was the Z-fold using the lovely uh, Bell Countryside paper pad to go in with that one and the gold card just a shadow. So that's number four. And number five was the rainbow of colours there on the congrats you did it then. All right, so all five of those for you to have a choose from. Brilliant. Get voting, Crafters TV over on Facebook, Crafters Companion over on YouTube. Uh, right, uh, you've got a few moments to get your votes in. Something else I need to remind you about, of course, is the Get It, Got It Good. It's a Spectrum or Advanced Discovery Kit selection. So you get Adventures in Colour and the Art of Illustration. You buy one, you get one half price, which is absolutely fantastic. I think these make brilliant, well, brilliant as just a little gift for yourself, but brilliant gifts uh, to give to other people. Because what you've got in here is all the pens that you need. You've got the worksheet, so you don't need to worry about ink pads or cardstock. And you've also got all the information as to how you use the products as well and how these uh, come together. So brilliant. It is like a little hobby in a box, really. Um, so it's, you've got everything there you need good to go. Under £30 uh, for Platinum members if you want to get your money. Oh, you want to get your money on those? You want to get your hands on those? Uh, right, uh, Jan, I believe you're going to need to take us through these. Yeah, do you know, again, you know, they are such a brilliant idea for somebody that's just starting their journey. You may already be a crafter, but you might not have dipped your toe into the colouring aspect of it. You know, you might have a friend that's just starting their journey. These are a great way to sort of try the different markers that we do before you go you commit to buying like a full set of them because most of us you know once we've decided on something you can't just buy one or two you've got to have a whole set but this gives you the opportunity to try them and see what works for you so in the adventures in color then this one's got a selection of five of our classic alcohol markers and five of our illustrators so you might say well why do we need two different types of pen jam they're all alcohol markers and they're all the same color family you will get the same color family in this set in the large set as what you do in the illustrators now we've chosen different colors in here so that you've got a variety you can see across the top of the box there we've got a whole spectrum of colors for you to have a go at some nice um sort of palette of primary colors and things and then you've got those lovely earthy tones as well purely because we're looking at skin and hair so you've got the skin tones and the hair tones and then you've got those brighter sections there to try out on the uh, the other aspects so the main difference between them is your classic pen they're both double-ended but the classic has got a bullet tip and a chisel tip and what I mean by that is you've got a nice rounded bullet tip for doing sort of more confined areas and you know little tiny pieces that are a bit more uh, tricky and then if you've got a large area to colour just spin it round and you've got that fantastic chisel tip there that will lay down colour quite quickly and then it may be that you want to flick back to your bullet tip to just neaten up round the edges you know use them accordingly to the space that you're working with so that's the classics that's sort of our sort of like um i'm not say the main range because they've all got their own space but this was sort of like the foundation range the classics and then we moved on to add some of the others into the mix now the the illustrators again you've got the bullet nib there and again very very fine on the illustrator so you can get really small fine details with that one but the difference the main difference is that the other end of this one is that gorgeous japanese brush nib which brings a lot of different techniques with it so we've put these in specifically for things like that hair and animal fur you can do that lovely flicking technique with it where you get a real nice effect particularly for animal fur and things like that the green ones just flicking up from the bottom look like blades of grass so different techniques with the different types of pens so we put you five of each in there to try and then you've got one of our art liners which are black ink and once this is dry it is waterproof ink so again lots of different things uh, even if it's just 
writing with them. It may be that you like to draw so you can actually do your own outline work with them. It might be, if, you know, if you've not got a, a, a platform that allows you to overstamp, just touching up if you've got a bit of a stamp missing. Really, really useful to have in your kit there. And then also, I don't think there's actually a lot left in these. These are the ones that have been opened. Uh, we've actually got on the back here, it just shows you a series of printed artwork for you that's been printed on a nice smooth cardstock that you know is going to work with your markers and also the line art has been done in a manner that it's not going to bleed when you use those alcohol markers so whichever way you go you know that you're safe and we focus quite heavily you can see on that artwork there's lots of skin tones lots of hair there's a little animal in there to practice the fur on there and you also get some instructions in there as to how to start and how to go about it you can see here we've got step by steps on how to add the colour and where to work on that shading there so again really really sort of intensive guide suggesting the colours for you so that you can have a play and then the second one is the art of illustration so again just a different choice same concept so in here we've got this the the range of pens again but because of the actual uh, nature of the designs in this one we've given you more of the brush nibs in this one you can see that beautiful colour palette again you've got a proper rainbow of colours in this one so you've got the illustrators there so two four six seven illustrators and three of the classics so same combination bullet nib chisel nib bullet nib and the um brush nib and you've got the art liner in there again and again if I just flick it over you can see you've got more open artwork in this one so again you've got plenty of room for that lovely bullet uh, brush nib to do all that flicking technique so lots of different ones in there is there a great way as I say of trying if you've not started your colouring journey or if like I say you've got a friend that's just starting out just giving you the facility to try something before you actually commit to buying a full uh, a full collection of them yeah absolutely yep. and brilliant brilliant get them buy one get one half price I'm just going to quickly run you back through uh, the concepts on these brand new dies uh, that we are launching for you of course the everyday uh, word edible so many different ways of using these which is fantastic so whether you're using them to cut into uh, apertures as you can see here uh, also uh, I love this one it's cut into the top but used again uh, in the bottom of the card there too brilliant as well for smaller cards here I uh, think about uh, using it on an easel card quite a small card there but still works very well going to work brilliantly on things like your diorama cards as well uh, I think that is a really great way of using it and even on just the black and white it looks really stunning so imagine what it's going to be like once you've got your design papers uh, in there you've got you know inky backgrounds going on your different textures uh, of cardstock fantastic here as well uh, on a fold back card so a Z fold back card there this one's really interesting uh, which is this one which is a sort of we call it an inverted fold back I think is what we're gonna we're gonna go with uh, yeah, it's awesome, isn't it? Then you've got this one, a uh, tent fold, but sort of an illusion tent fold uh, without acetate in there, which I think is awesome. Looks like it's floating almost. And again, if you just want to keep it really simple, especially if you're batch making, you've got the ability to do that. The great thing is, because there's so much detail and design in each one of the dies, it means that you don't have to do too much to them. Uh, just to let you know, card of the show, number four is the winner, Jan. I thought it might be. I Which would have one voted. Was that? that was the one with the Z fold on, yeah. Yes, like that I one did a lot. like that one myself, I must admit. Uh, really? Nicola liked number two with the Paisley design on there. Yeah, we've all got our favourites. Pink for me wins every time. You know what I'm like. Anything yeah. that's pink gets my vote. Brilliant, love that. I don't want there. Nicholas wants to show you a fireplace, I think. Um, <laughs> uh, right, fantastic. Uh, big thanks to Jan, of course. Uh, Jan and myself will be back this evening uh, in two hours' time, in fact, for Monday Makers. 7 pm here in the UK, 2 pm East Coast. Uh, 11 a.m. if you are across on the West Coast. I know we were sort of funny times last week, weren't we? But we're all back we're all to normal. Back to we're good, all yeah. caught up and back to normal uh, again. Now, don't forget to check out your baskets on this brand new exciting launch. I know you're going to absolutely love it. So many of you going for it. it got busier and busier as we've moved towards the end of the hour. Right. Get yourself a cup of tea, have some lunch, have some dinner. Uh, do what you need to do. Myself and Jan, we'll see you back here in two hours' time for Monday Makers. <laughs>